hey girl i am back with another youtube video and today i have some light pink acrylic toes and i'll be using some pink acrylic powder from chisel here i'm using my sanding band to remove all of the shine off my client's natural nails and i did kind of already start before i started recording so that's why you guys aren't going to see me really do like the last two toes because i already did them but once i'm finished doing this i'm going to go ahead and get my brush and remove all of the dust from the nail plate I did also spray some alcohol on this brush so as I'm dusting off the nails I'm also getting that dehydrator on there so we could dry the nail plate out before I start to apply any primer. When all of the dehydrator is finally dry, I am going to go in with my Young Nails Protein Ball and I'm also going to do one coat of my Nolif Primer. Yeah, with this combination, I've been able to keep my client's nails on for a long time and the acrylic toes actually last even longer. For the most part, my clients will come and get white and maybe in about a month and a half to two months, then they'll get a fill unless they want to change it because it lasts for a very long time. So I definitely think it's a great add-on service. I've actually seen that some people charge up to $100 for acrylic toes, and that's not even including a pedicure. So it's really just about what you feel like you should charge. At the moment, I charge $60 for acrylic toes. It used to be 50, but I was starting to slightly go up after seeing how long they last and how much people are actually charging for this. Today, my client wanted color 126 from Chisel and I'll be applying my first bead. Now I'm doing this very lightly and I left this video in real time. So one, I'm making sure that all of that acrylic is on top of the nail. Like I said, I am being very gentle. Then I'll use the tip of my brush to make sure I get into those side walls and start to pull this acrylic down very lightly. Making sure that I am wiping those side walls and like I said, just doing very light strokes going down the nail and going back and cleaning up that cuticle area. Once I'm finished with doing all of this, that's when I'll remove any extra acrylic and I'll be using my cuticle pusher to do so. Before moving the acrylic powder, I do dip the end of the cuticle pusher into some acrylic powder. This way, it's much easier to remove the remaining acrylic. And another nail tick taught me that. Shout out to her because it came in handy and it just made the process much faster. For the next toe and for the rest of them, I will be doing the same method. Just remember to take your time. Don't rush as you're doing this because going back and constantly having to clean a flooded cuticle area is very time consuming. In many of my other videos, I get a lot of comments asking why would anybody like get this? And for the most part, people just want square toenails. Not everybody has naturally long toenails and not everybody has a square big toe. With putting the acrylic on the toes, you can still get a very natural look and you can also get the shaped toenails that you may want. So that's why people get it for the most part. And of course, there are other people that don't really have much of a big toenail at all or they just have really small toenails and they might want to extend them.
when doing the acrylic toes i try not to extend the acrylic too far of course you don't really want long toenails but also later we'll have to file under these so you still want to allow yourself enough space to file underneath the toenail without actually you know damaging your client's real toenails so that's why i'm not removing the acrylic powder right where her natural toenail is i do kind of go a little bit out and then once i finish removing the acrylic from underneath i'll go back and see if i want them to be shorter but you do want these to be thin later so when i get to the filing part you guys are going to see what i mean For the big toenail, I'll actually be doing this in two beads, and for the first bead, I'll be forming my square toenail. So I'm placing the bead pretty much in the center of the nail. I'm going to make sure that all of my acrylic is sidewall to sidewall as normal, and then I'm going to start to lightly use the tip of my brush again to bring the acrylic down. I'm starting off by patting the acrylic to make sure that it is sidewall to sidewall. I'm going to check both sides, make sure. Then I'll start to lightly do those strokes again to bring the acrylic down before I use my cuticle pusher to remove the excess acrylic. I'm very gentle when first removing the acrylic powder because of course you don't want to remove too much so I do first start at the end when it comes to the big toenail and if I do need to go back and remove more I will but if anything I'll just file down with my file later. For the cuticle bead, I am placing this bead away from the cuticle area, right on top of the previous acrylic, and then using the tip of my brush, I'm gonna slowly push the acrylic into the area. For the most part, it'll just naturally fall onto the rest of the nail plate, and if it does spill, I'll just use the tip of my brush to clean it up, but I'll be trying my best to make sure it does not. This looks really good though. I might have to do my toes this color. I actually got a foot tattoo recently. So I really want to show you guys the foot tattoo and do my toes again. So y'all let me know down below what should I do on my toes. Like I don't want to do a basic French tip. Like French tip is cool, but I don't want to do a plain one. And I'm not really too sure if I want to do a solid color. Before I start to use my e-file, I am going to be using my 100 grit hand file to go across the free edge and straighten these up before I start to remove any acrylic. Thank you. 
I do need these acrylic toes to be very thin, very natural. So here I am using my five in one bit to start to remove some of the acrylic powder. And afterwards, I'm also gonna lightly go underneath the toenail to remove any extra acrylic powder. I'm making sure that I'm going side wall to side wall when I'm sealing the cuticle area. You do want the whole nail to be even for it to look very natural. And like I said, afterwards, I am gonna be going underneath the toenails and probably I'm pretty sure you guys could see that underneath them is a little thick. They look a little weird right now, but they're not going to look like that by the end of the video. When going underneath the toenail with this bit, one, this bit is a safety bit, so it is safe, but I do slow the speed down tremendously. So it's going pretty slow when I'm doing this, and I'm being very light, just going underneath the toenail. And if I want to later file these down some more, I will, because it'll be easier now that they're not so thick. Now that I have these nails all nice and filed, I'm going right back in with that 100 grit file, going into those side walls and straightening up these toenails if needed.
I did go back in with my extra fine, but just to make sure that they was as thin as I could possibly get them, I do really like how these came out. And now you guys see underneath the toenails and they don't look how they was looking before. Before I start to apply any nail art, I am lastly going to buff all of the toenails and clean them off. And then we're gonna add some rhinestones and some flowers to the toes. So as always, I am using my Priosa crystals that I get from Blue Street Crystals because I told y'all we don't use rhinestones over here. And at first I was a little undecisive about where I wanted to place it, but I felt like just placing it in the upper corner would be best. So I'm also using some 3D flowers that I got from Amazon and the wax stick I'm using to pick up the stones is also from Amazon. For the rhinestones and the flowers, I'll be using my Zule Nail Bling Glue and afterwards I'm going to make sure I clean these toes off and top coat them with my D&D top coat. So you guys, I am about to finish up these toenails and afterwards, of course, I'm going to show you guys the finished look. So I do hope that you guys enjoyed this YouTube video. And if you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.